Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Closure Buff. Um, this buff is going to be led by Lana Hashman, who's going to, yeah. Sure, I will kick it off. Uh, so hi, everyone. I am the, uh, the Debian Closure team de facto lead. Uh, I have been working on the team since 2017, since I revived it. Uh, and uh, I have also a few members from the team with me on the call, as well as uh, some folks from the puppet team who might be asking questions, uh, as will become relevant later in the BOF. So I have Rob Browning from the Closure team, and I also have uh, Utkarsh and Zigo. Uh, so uh, let's kick it off. Uh, if everybody can see the pad, uh, you should see uh, what I'm going to go through in the session. I'm going to just start with a quick introduction uh, of, you know, Clojure for those who are not familiar with Clojure, uh, the state of, you know, the current Clojure packages in Debian, and then uh, what work needs to be done in the upcoming months. So, uh, and I'm going to share my screen. So, okay. So what is Clojure? Uh, Clojure is a Lisp that runs on the JVM. Uh, so some folks may call it a dialect of Lisp. Uh, I would call it my favorite dialect of Java. Uh, so uh, all of the various Clojure programs in Debian, uh, the source code is distributed in you know, Clojure source code format. Uh, and if it needs to be compiled, it is compiled down to Java bytecode, uh, which makes it architecture all, which is kind of handy. Uh, so. There are many packages uh, that are currently maintained by the Clojure team. Uh, you can see some of them here on the DDPO page. Uh, not all of them have been updated recently. For example, many of them are you know, the same in stable as they are in testing and unstable currently. Um, and let's see, what else do we have on the agenda? Um, uh, so goals, what work needs to be done? Uh, so I have recently updated the wiki page on the Clojure wiki, uh, and uh, as far as goals for the upcoming release, we probably want to update Clojure to 111. However, that's not yet available, so as soon as that's available, uh, we should do that update. Uh, we probably want to update some of the other Clojure packages. Uh, they haven't necessarily been uploaded in a while. We may have some policy updates uh, that we can apply. Um, we probably want to, if possible, package some of the new CLI tools that have been out for a number of years, but just haven't been included in Debian. And we can talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, and then uh, potentially anything else that can be accomplished in the sections below that go into a little bit more detail. Um, so Clojure itself uh, was targeted initially at the JVM, uh, but also targets other runtimes such as the CLR, uh, such as the node runtime for JavaScript. Uh, so one of the potential goals uh, for missing Clojure tools in Debian would be to target Clojure script. Uh, there is a CLI provided by Upstream as opposed to the CLI provided by the Debian packages, which was introduced as a Debian script and does not match the Upstream uh, because it predates it. Uh, but there are a bunch of dependencies that make adding these new Upstream uh, uh, scripts relatively complicated, as well as a package transition to potentially use the new scripts. Uh, boot is a closure build runtime uh, that we currently don't have packaged in Debian, uh, but could potentially be including. Um, and then there's some talk about potentially writing a line again helper to allow packages to be able to line again, uh, which is the uh, most popular uh, Debian build tool outside of like the upstream uh, depth scripts uh, to make this a little bit easier than using like some of the templating that I have currently provided. Uh, we may also want to work on policy. Uh, there's also a big question of reproducibility. Uh, so Clojure, the language itself, is not currently reproducible, which means that any binaries distributed in Debian are also not reproducible. Uh, there is a bug uh, sort of tracking this and a discussion on it. Uh, and what else do we have? Um, there's some you know, sort of general packaging hygiene stuff. Uh, and there's also stuff that we've done since the Buster release. I think the last time that I held one of these buffs was at uh, DebConf in Montreal in 2017, uh, because that was the last DebConf I was able to attend. And uh, I think that's probably all I need to share in terms of screen. So uh, I guess back to video. So let's see, what do we have on the pad? I am happy to hold a discussion and discuss any of these, you know, 
potential goals uh, for the team. Uh, one of the other things that I mentioned uh, was that we potentially uh, have some work to be done in uh, Puppet uh, because Puppet, uh, it turns out these days, uh, uses large components of closure. So in order to package you know, uh, the various Puppet stuff, uh, we will need to do that. So uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think that's a good overview. Yeah, I think Zigo, Akash, and I, maybe not Akash entirely, but at least Zigo and I are interested in the, trying to package Puppet Server in Debian and Puppet Server 6. Uh, well, Puppet Server was previously written in Ruby and now it's written in Clojure. And we have a, a large amount of dependencies to write. So that's a mm -hmm. be here. Yeah, awesome. So. I mean, th thanks for joining. Uh, there's many things that we can potentially discuss uh, during today's BOF, uh, but hopefully that's a decent overview of kind of all of the things that are happening in the world of closure. So uh, any I'm I'm questions? I'm interested maybe in um, you talking about the, the reproducibility bug. Uh, is it like a really hard bug? Is upstream open? I haven't read the bug. So <laughs> That, that is a really good question. Uh, so uh, let's see. Uh, let me pull up the bug, and I'll, I'll share my screen again. Yeah, I think I was, I was going to talk about this as well. Um, generally, I've seen, I've seen um, upstream to be very helpful in uh, making these things reproducible. So um, OK, I mean, let's, let's read the bug and see. Oh, I mean, I, I don't know what, what's mm -hmm. really the bug. So um, yeah, so uh, this was a bug filed against Linegan as opposed to the core language runtime. But if you take a look at the DDPO page, uh, like the, the core language is not reproducible as well. Uh, so this was mostly a symptom as opposed to uh, a root cause here. Uh, we actually, uh, there was, uh, we removed strip non-determinism uh, on this one because it was doing weird things to performance due to uh, strange things about how closure bytecode and recompilation works. So. Um, if we look at, let's see how oh, this is probably very old because closure 1.8 doesn't exist anymore. Um, but let me pull up, uh, one of these reproducibility reports and I can see if I can try to show you, like, I mean, it's, it's not reproducible across the board for the most part. Uh, and it's because of non-deterministic Java byte code. Uh, now that is for, uh, let's see. That's, oh, that's, it's strange that it says this is unstable, but it's actually pointing at stretch. So here, let's take a look at like in Buster. Um, and let me see if I can find the differences. Like there's specific ordering things uh, in terms of like how this code is generated. And from what I can see, it's mostly like, uh, I've seen a number of instances. I'm so, I mean, this is just ordering stuff, uh, and I'm not sure necessarily how to fix that. Uh, but it's pretty, like, it, it's not a trivial thing in terms of the differences here. It's not like a small and obvious thing. I think it would take a decent amount of time to try to determine, because uh, like there are so many things that are just kind of moved around. Um, one of the things that I had previously identified uh, was that uh, it looked like uh, there were, for example, like. Uh, anonymous functions, lambdas that were being generated. And uh, those would have like an identifier, which would be like a numeric string. Uh, and sometimes those would change between builds. Uh, and I don't know if there was like a way to set the random seed uh, for those to be generated from, but uh, yeah, fundamentally, I think that this is like non-trivial to fix. Uh, and so I suspect uh, it would be best if someone from like the reproducible builds team actually went and took like a deep look at this. Uh, I don't think that this is an easy thing to patch downstream. I think this needs to be addressed upstream. Can y'all hear me now? Uh, yes. Excellent. I have no idea what I did. Um, <laughs> so I poked around a little bit yesterday and saw that at least the obvious uses of the random number generator were using uh, the same seed. Okay. My best guess is that it, it might be well, exactly what you said and concurrency like that that number may well be coming from an atom that they're incrementing and they're actually generating the code in parallel and so it's a race to see who you know gets number 12 on any given run that but that's just a guess and i agree with you that uh, somebody will have to dig into this but i also have uh some people i can 
I, I may be able to ask who they're not closure developers directly, but they might have a clue. So I'll badger them. Awesome. Um, that would be great. Did, did you try to report this upstream? Um, and I'm not sure how helpful they are or how kind they That's are a good question. Team. So uh, previously, uh, I, so it kind of depends. Sometimes uh, closure upstream is really uh, quite amenable to, you know, like, various uh like suggestions and some like frequently they'll say like we you know this this doesn't matter to us therefore like you know close won't fix so it's unclear uh i can't remember uh like i feel like maybe this was reported at some point uh but it's been so long and the the closure uh the closure jira is hard to trawl through so i don't think i'll be able to give you an answer on this buff uh but uh, if there has been a discussion, like I cannot imagine that uh, necessarily like the closure core team would want to be doing like the majority of the heavy lifting. Uh, I suspect that uh, like we might be pushing that effort in Debian. Okay, well, thanks. That's uh, nice to know and a little bit sad to hear. Um, and language that's not producible as a whole is always a big thing, especially if we're going to be packaging a bunch of stuff. It's not really yeah. Fun. So one of the good news is that uh, only like sort of binary pre-compiled Java bytecode has this problem. Uh, library packages, like the recommendation from upstream is that you package those basically just as source code and do compilation compilation on the fly as needed. Uh, and there are reasons for this, uh, namely that like between different versions of potentially the JVM, as well as different versions of the closure runtime, there are no bytecode uh, compatibility guarantees. So without us doing like this massive matrix of like bytecode uh, generation to pre-distribute, uh, it would be kind of moot. So uh, rather than bothering to uh, pre-compile most of the library code, which then solves the reproducibility problem because you're just basically getting text. Um, uh, what we do is uh, we have auto package tests that check to make sure that everything builds with the class path with the current runtime of closure as specified in Debian. I actually, so, sorry, go ahead. Does that mean that the bytecode is being compiled in the post -test? Uh Sorry, can you repeat that? Your audio is a little garbled. Does that mean that the bytecode is being built when we install the package? Uh, the bytecode is being built at runtime. Uh, so uh, we are not like, for example, if I go and uh, I install libpomegranate closure, uh, I do not build any bytecode until I try to use that package with closure. Uh, like closure will automatically do the just-in-time compilation. Okay, when thank you. One question I had about that um, was we had, we've had experience where doing AOT compilation can have a pretty big effect on performance, um, especially startup performance um, in some of the work that I've done. And I wondered, I'm not volunteering for this necessarily, and I don't, but I'm wondering if there is, have been a discussion or maybe even any interest in on the Emacs side, for a long time, we've had dependency-based compilation and install time. Um, the Debian common, uh, the Debian Emacs policy infrastructure. We could probably do the same thing for Clojure if we wanted to, um, and <laughs> might even be able to steal some code from there if we wanted to. But I'm wondering, has that been discussed, and do we think it's of interest? And of course, the key thing there is it not only rebuilds all the add-on packages in the right order at whenever the packages are installed or upgraded, but it also rebuilds them all whenever Emacs changes because Emacs, we don't know for sure about the bytecode either. So we could do a similar trick whenever the J open JDK changes, a new version gets installed, we just rebuild the world. Um, again, not volunteering, just wondered. <laughs> yeah, uh, I would not be volunteering for that either. Uh, Personally, I suspect it would be a lot of work for not a lot of benefit. Uh, like, 
Clojure is expected to constantly be recompiling bytecode, like basically every time you make a change. Uh, so if, for example, like you have, I don't know, some project that you're working on on your local Debian system and you're linking it against these system closure libraries, every time you make a change to that code, you're recompiling it anyways. Uh, having the bytecode available on your system doesn't matter. Clojure will just go and like say, oh, I've got the source, I'm going to redo it again. So, um, oh, sure, but like for PuppetDB in particular, ahead of time yes. compilation can change the startup time by yes. more uh, than so, an order of magnitude. So we do ahead of time compilation for Linegan. Uh, of course, if you are, for example, like using line again against a different runtime of closure. Uh, so for example, if you're like using line run uh, with say a newer version of closure than is currently uh, available in Debian or even an older version of closure, uh, that will uh, you know, go and be like, ah, this is old. I must go and do these new recompilation things. I think is the kind of thing maybe we can look at once we've been packaging large things like uh, Puppet or uh, Puppet DB, if we ever get a package Puppet DB correctly in Debian, um, if and once that's done, we can actually run benchmarks and see uh, what the hit is. Because I, I guess that upstream Puppet DB does ahead of uh, compiles this, this ahead and just pushes a binary, right? Yes, uh, I can tell you it is on the order of seconds. Uh, in terms of overhead, like it will be very, very painful. Uh, no, potentially that's not as much of a worry for something like Puppet, where you have like, you know, you kind of run it once and that's that. Uh, but for say like the closure language runtime uh, or a line again, where you're frequently running the command over and over again, uh, you absolutely want something pre-compiled available. But then, yeah, th but then we run into these reproducibility issues, so. There are lots of comments in the etherpad. Do you want me to address any of those? Yes, so uh, the, the blue ones are mine. So that things I wrote because I have a cranky internet connection here. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, well, I will just go ahead and uh, I will respond to some of these. Oh, I see that there is a comment that I should speak more slowly. Uh, I will try to speak more slowly. Uh, my apologies. Uh, OK, so uh, the first question. I have a question before you proceed. I'm sorry sure. to cut you off in the between. No but, problem. Um, yeah, OK, so in the to-do, uh, in the wiki that you shared, um, there is uh, a task, a to-do task uh, that you know we want to update the closure packages that are in the Debian archive. Do we, do we just want to update uh, as in, I mean, for instance, there are some packages that might depend on it and we don't want to um, bump their version. So that is why there are like sometimes the reason to have outdated packages because the, the main package, the main uh, thing, which is uh, why the other packages were packaged, uh, does not currently support the latest package of their reverse dependencies. I'm not sure if, if you're... If you get yes. that no, that, that, that's right. Um, okay. So uh, most of the packages in Debian uh, under the closure language ecosystem, they're not packaged specifically uh, for you to, for example, like, you know, uh, apt install random package so that you can do system development against that package. You can do that. Uh, it's not particularly well integrated with the standard closure workflow. Uh, and so typically uh, closure tools are going to be pulling dependencies externally from, for example, like uh, Maven Central or uh, Clojars or other repositories. Uh, and so generally uh, my position is that uh, any closure package in Debian uh, should be there in order to facilitate uh, some tool available on the system that happens to be written in Clojure. So whether that's Linegan, whether that's the core Clojure language, whether that's, uh, say, like Puppet, uh, my goal would be to ensure that the packages are, um, they're, they're the corresponding versions for those dependency trees rather than always just trying to ship the latest. Uh, Clojure is, I think, uh, sort of, guilty to some extent of uh, often ho holding really outdated dependencies because the language runtime is very stable. So there's not necessarily like a culture of like constantly up 
updating packages and dependencies to latest. Uh, so as a result of that, uh, I would say uh, it's, it's quite safe to leave them kind of where they are. Uh, mostly uh, like for hygiene, I'm thinking of updating packages. So for example, ensuring that they all are compliant with the latest standards policy, uh, ensuring that, uh, you know, like the, the packaging all looks good and is up to date, uh, not necessarily pulling down new versions from upstream. All right. Do you know to um, if um, ABI breakage between, let's say, uh, let's say we're trying to package puppet server, which has a, a huge list of dependencies, uh, do you know if like, a new version of a dependency might break something? Is that something that is common or? Uh, so yeah, that, that is potentially a risk. Uh, I would not be super worried about that. Uh, and the reason that I would not be super worried about that is I would recommend probably the way that we should package Puppet is the same way that we package Line again, which is that we do a big uh, ahead of time, uh, what Upstream calls an Uber jar, where basically like you take all of the dependencies, like all of the things, there's no like, you know, the, the Java equivalent of dynamic linking going on. You take everything, you compile all the bytecode that you need, you get one single static executable. And uh, that's kind of the end of that. And so basically the only thing you would need to worry about uh, in terms of breakage is if you had say like a new version come into the archive and then you can't build Puppet, uh, then that might like, you know, uh, we would need to go and fix that in order for the next binary published to the archive to work properly. Uh, okay, anything else before I dive into the Etherpad? Our, one quick question. Are we yes. allowing Uber jars? If we are, then some of my concerns may not as well apply. Yes. Uh, so, I mean, currently there is one Uber jar and it is a line again. Uh, I have no concerns with uh, shipping Uber jars. That's the upstream policy. Uh, like, that is how I think many other teams are now sort of moving to ship things uh, as various uh, language runtimes sort of move in that direction. At this point, I'm not super worried about it because, you know, one of the concerns of doing that is potentially uh, outdated things in terms of dependencies and uh, like uh, duplication on the system. Right now, we don't have enough things, I think, that would result in large amounts of duplication. Uh, so uh, I, I don't think it's a serious risk for any There'll of There'll be a good stuff. chunk between Puppet Server and Puppet DB, but I don't know if that matters. Yeah, I, I don't think that that would matter that much. I mean, we're yeah. talking, if it was like, you know, dozens or hundreds of packages, there might be more concern than like. Three. It may be. But that's the thing, like, if we don't have so many packages, then probably we can figure out how to package them separately. Like for Puppet, we, we counted uh, around 20 to 25. That's manageable. But the whole tree is much larger than that. So if you were to install Puppet server on a machine, you'd get something like 200 closure dependencies. Whereas if we're only like using the Uber jar version, then you just install Puppet server, which is a large binary, and then you can run that easily. Yes. I think that might be more performant and uh, give us less headaches, maybe, having something yes. more stable with Puppet. Um, and as for the size, I think you don't care. If you're running Puppet on a server anyway, that machine is powerful. You're not running Puppet on a machine with 250 megs of RAM. So. Yeah, and that's that's what we're doing for Line again as well. And I mean, like the file sizes we're talking about here are not particularly large. Uh, let me pull up uh, quickly. Let me see what the actual file sizes for like a line again are in the binary package. Cause I, I don't think they're, they're really not that big. Um, do, do, do. So sh shall we stop doing uh, what we wrote on the wiki? Uh, no, that's, that's still relevant because we're, we need those dependencies to build Puppet Server in Debian. Yeah, you need to upload all of the dependencies. Instead like the of having all these dependencies as runtime dependencies, we're going to have them as build time dependencies. Yes. OK, so the Uber jar that you're talking about is a pet server itself, then. All right, thank you. Now I get it. Exactly. OK, uh, I'm just checking right now to see if I can see. Uh, da, 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 that's the source package. Binary package. Okay, so the binary package for a line again is like 14 megabytes. So we're not talking about like really anything substantial here, right? Uh, 
OK, uh, any other okay. questions? Yes, uh, before we move on to the uh, questions that are in the pad, I just have a quick uh, thing to ask. Uh, so I guess we started the discussion um, that there are a lot of packages, closure packages, uh, that are in the Java team. I discussed this in the uh, Puppet team buff as well. Do we intend to move those closure, closure packages from the Java team to the closure team? I would like to do that. Uh, I proposed that in like 2017. Uh, the reasoning behind that proposal being that for all of the closure packages that are just closure source code, that they're not Java source code, there's no real need to have any understanding of Java in order to package them. Uh, so like, I think it makes sense to move them because uh, it'll be easier. Like uh, the Java packaging is much more complicated, I think, than closure packaging, particularly for something like a library where essentially we're just kind of like, here's a tarball of the source code. Uh, I think so. yeah, it makes sense because you know uh, there might be dependencies which uh, we need to update or something. Then we will need to go to Java team to do that. And I think it's better if if the all the closure closure stuff is inside the closure team. That makes this thing easier and you know. And did you manage to have access right to move them on salsa directly? Uh, so I should have access now to do the migration. Uh, I have not sat down and done that on mass. Uh, we'll have to probably also, I mean, all of the sim links should be in place, but we'll still probably have to update the home pages of all of the, the packages or the, the packaging uh, links, so. Yeah, but it was like the thing was to do it on Salsa on, on the clicking on the repository uh, uh, tab and then that way you move it to the closure team and you have a redirection which is not impacting anyone then. Yes. Yeah. That is the hope. Uh, that should make it much easier. Uh, but yeah, just haven't sat down and had a chance to do it. Um, there's like a bunch of them that we need to identify and I would rather not go the like pointy clicky route for like, you know, 30 packages. So. I can, I can write you a script then. The API. I think that the um, supposedly the salsa team already has scripts for this, so I just need to reach out to them. Uh, Rob, I see that there's a bunch of back scroll in IRC from Alex Miller, who is one of the uh, like core members of Upstream Closure. Uh, do you want to speak to a little bit of that for the uh, live stream? Well, I think one of the things we were talking about was just that my original. Uh, suggestion about whether or question about whether or not we wanted um, automatic rebuilding and install time. Uh, uh, we were talking a little bit about that and maybe completely irrelevant if we're going to allow Uberjar. So I think we probably already covered that. But he also mentioned um, direct linking, which, yeah, that's a thing I think we probably, if we're not already, we, we probably want to enable for the final packages. Um, and maybe for everything, uh, it basically, um, uh, I'd have to go refresh in the tails, but it avoids a level of indirection at the top level for all references in closure. So it can get rid of overhead. It, it also means it's less dynamic. You can't go in and mess around with things at runtime as easily. Um, but that's not relevant. And I think it can have an non-trivial effect, uh, depending on the use case in performance. It's pretty much just performance related. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm taking a look right now at the link uh, that was provided in IRC, and I'll make sure to add that to the Etherpad. Uh, I believe it's just a line again option. So, and yeah. also, for those who don't know, there's some plugin. I forget if they're built in or not for line again, where you can do update in on the project file to make some minor modifications to a project file automatically without having to, you know, do something uglier <laughs> um, at, when you're wanting to mess with it. Yeah, uh, I definitely wouldn't mind adding that to, for example, like uh, the line again uh, build parameters. Now, granted, uh, uh, if it's just like a thing that we can stick in the project uh, .close file, then that should make it easy. Uh, but hopefully, uh, it will be. I mean, if it's if it's as straightforward as like a single build parameter, then yeah, we should just do it. Uh, if it's already happening, according to this doc link. Uh, that I pasted in the Etherpad. Uh, it it's already should be enabled on closure 1.8 and higher. Uh, and so if that's the case, uh, we don't do any modification to the upstream build. We just use their scripts. So that should be happening already for, uh, for oh, this, that binary. Uh, so it would just be line again and potentially puppet server that we would need to enable that on. 
I should probably also call out that he he mentioned uh, uh, with I assume his upstream hat on that uh, they all, they definitely do encourage users to just distribute uh, the source libs. I assume meaning you know libs not compiled. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's been uh, my understanding from like, that's just the upstream practice in Clojure, uh, both for uh, like my understanding working with the Linegan folks, my understanding working with Clojure upstream. Uh, that's just the recommendation. So that, that's mostly why I've been trying to save us like pain and suffering there. Uh, it should be, it's much more straightforward to just distribute the source and that is the recommendation. So. All right, maybe we should um... Have a look at the other panel of questions because we have only 15 minutes left. Great. Uh, I am happy to do so. Uh, so I'm just going to go through the questions in uh, the order that they have been put in the doc. Uh, so first question is, how does one tell if a dependency in a project.closure is a Java or Clojure dependency? That's a hard question. There's no obvious way to know without like going and looking at the, uh, the, the package itself. You can so guess. What, what's happening but, is that I, I look at the project of CLG and trying to figure out which package it, it's matching or not. And it's not very easy to do so. No, it's not. Uh, it's, it's, it, you know, it, it might be helpful if, for example, like we had some sort of mapping in Debian uh, between like, this is the upstream Maven central artifacts name and this is the package in Debian's name. As far as I'm aware, we don't have that. If we did have something like that, I would be very happy to also contribute closure package names to that as well. Uh, but there's there's no way to tell just from the name. Uh, well, are you sure, familiar um, with okay. the way it works in, in the Python world? Sorry? Do, do you know how it works in, with Python? Like we have a DH Python embed a file which has precisely that, a kind of dictionary. I see. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't have strong opinions on what that metadata should look like. That's certainly an option. Uh, but uh, I think the problem right now is that Clojure uh, is like a pretty small portion of the wider Java ecosystem, and there's really no way to tell. Uh, and if we were to implement this at the Java team level, uh, that would be quite a lot of work, I think, if it's not been done. So that would be potentially a good question to bring to the Java team mailing list. But I agree with Zigo that uh, mapping the dependencies for Puppet Server was a pain in the ass. It took me like two days of work. And even there, I made a bunch of errors that people corrected me on. So it was a very manual and tedious process. I talked with the people in the Java stream, in the, in the, the Java team, and there has been uh, interest in doing that. Uh, somebody, I don't remember their name, I think it's Subin, maybe. Um, did uh, started doing some work on that and had something working, but it wasn't working perfectly. Um, but I think it, yeah, it should be, since we're using Maven anyway, it, it should be uh, it should be in the Java team. It would be more. Yeah, uh, yeah, that that sounds totally fine to me. And if, for example, like either the uh, the Maven repo helper, or uh, if it's like an actual Maven package, then the Maven Debian helper can help us write that information, then all the better. Uh, it'll make it easy to standardize across the board. Uh, currently, uh, all of the uh, packages in Debian, all of the Java packages, uh, build a Java uh, or a Maven repository within the system. So, uh, and all the closure packages add this metadata as well and get registered there. So you can basically point at uh, your Debian system with all of these Java packages and treat it like you would any other Maven repo source. Um, let's see, what else do we have for questions in the pad? Uh, there's a question on what are the causes of non-reproducibility in Clojure? I think we covered that one already. Um, yeah, and Alex just, I talked to him about it for just a second, and he mm -hmm. mentioned that, yeah, gen sim names, the integer names, that kind of thing might be a problem. And he suggested that we could ask a question on ask.closure.org, and he monitors mm -hmm. that and can make a ticket. Great. Yeah, then I think that potentially that is something we should do. Uh, next question is, can you explain how the Debian palms.xml gets generated by Cloge Helper? Uh, well, I think I would have to talk about Cloge Helper in order to discuss that. So 
Let's see. Uh, I'm going to look through just the rest of the questions before I jump into that, because that's probably a more extended subject. Uh, what would you suggest to check on a freshly new package? What should I do to make sure my package is in shape for uploading? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, you can ask me for a review uh, for the closure ones. Uh, there are some reference packages that I would look to to see like, hey, what should a closure package look like? Um, but I don't have any like examples off of the top of my head. Um, yeah, but uh, it would be a shame to give you so many things to review. That's the problem. Yes. Uh, well, so certainly if there are other folks from the Clojure team who would be willing to step up and assist with that, uh, I think that would be awesome too. Uh, right now, uh, it's it's always great like to have more volunteers, and that's definitely an area that you know we could have more volunteers get involved. I think we're going to need review for the first few packages, maybe, and then once we're going to be uh, once we have done a, a bit of them we'll have more experience and we shouldn't need everything. And mm -hmm. I think what Cash mentioned with uh, the auto package test is important. Uh, it's a good way to test if something is working, if you can call uh, the closure package, the closure library, so. Yeah. Uh, so the next question is, oh, this is a good question. Why do we have to specify all of the dot jars in the Debian slash package dot class path can't this be found out of dependencies? Uh, so Clojure currently does not do that like automatically in the Clojure runtime. It doesn't have like a dependency resolver. Uh, so the options are uh, you can use a dependency resolver like Maven to generate the class path. You can use a tool like uh, the, the upstream Cloj uh, depths alpha script, which could potentially generate your class path. Basically, there are many tools, uh, most of which uh, ultimately uh, rely on Maven code to generate a class path. Uh, but if you don't have one already, you need a way to provide one. Uh, so what we do in most of these packages is we just go and say, hey, here's the class path. We know what it is. Uh, we don't need to, to, to use all these tools in order to specify it. Uh, that's something that we can do at packaging time. Is it fine to write this file by hand? Yes. Assuming it works. Uh, but uh, there's some automation available to help with that. Um, and then how, how do I check that what I wrote there is correct? Uh, you can check that by trying to run the package, uh, you like, but invoking it basically with the closure runtime and see if it works. Uh, specifying only that particular jar on the class path to closure. I think and, the newer upstream CLJ stuff has a way to actually print the class path that it generates now too. I don't know if Linegan does. Yeah, but both of them, uh, th yeah, line also has a uh, class path uh, sub command that you can use. Um, and I think that's actually how we uh, generate that when we build line itself, since it's a bootstrapping build. And then that class path file will end up in the jar of the library, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay, so we have two more questions. Uh, one is about the uh, the team's Git tag workflow. Uh, I am uh, not particularly like attached to any particular workflow. Uh, I think um, you're referring to the workflow uh, on the wiki in a tutorial. Uh, that's obviously not the only way to do things. Uh, it is simply a tutorial guide, uh, and it's also uh, quite a few years out of date. Uh, so there's potentially lots of improvements to be made there. So. Um, I would not accept that as the law of the land or something. Uh, that That's just, you know, here's one way you can do this. Uh, but I think we should maybe jump into uh, this question about Cloge Helper. Um, and I will go ahead and share my screen to give a bit of context. So Cloge Helper. Uh, so Cloge Helper is a small closure package that I wrote in order to assist with templating out closure packaging. Uh, there had previously been a script that had been written in Python uh, way back in like 2014 that uh, did not do a lot of things and kind of fell out of use. Uh, 
Um, I also know that uh, Poikos had written some bash scripts to help automating uh, enclosure packaging, uh, but this is what I ended up writing uh, to assist uh, with my own packaging. This is not like a, you know, uh, this, this isn't like my namespace on Salsa. It's not like in the team namespace. I mean, I'd be happy to donate it to the team, but uh, I'd say it's more like beta. <laughs> it's certainly not in Debian currently. Uh, but uh, so I, we had done a little bit of work uh, on this uh, today earlier in like addressing some of the problems, outdated stuff, CI, that kind of thing. Uh, and so effectively what this package does is uh, you can basically run this standalone jar uh, and it will ask you a bunch of questions and then it will it'll go and generate a bunch of scaffolding uh, for, a, uh, for a Debian package, uh, for a closure package. Uh, and so this is just, uh, you can take a look. Uh, there's a link in the etherpad if you want to pull this up. Uh, but the specific question was, how does uh, this generate a POM? Uh, and I can just pull up the code for that, because uh, I believe that is in here. Yeah, because it seemed all like magic to me, and I, I, I just wonder. The rest of uh, I think I, I can figure it out, but that one, whoa. Yes, uh, so uh, it, it's not actually that. Um, it's not very sophisticated. It just shells out to line and calls line palm. So it uses line again to generate the palm. It doesn't do that directly. Uh, and in particular, it shells out to line. It's not like added as a dependency in the, in the closure package. So it's not like that's part of the, uh, the source uh, code here that you would get in a standalone jar, you would still have a system dependency on line again. Uh, but given that you need line again to build and run this anyways, that didn't seem like something uh, excessive to ask for. Uh, while I have this open, any questions about Cloge Helper other than that one? I think it would be a good idea if you could move it in the, uh, the team's path. Uh, it would make certainly make the merge request easier since we wouldn't have to fork it and then we could just use branches. Um, and I agree that I think if we're to if we're going to use that a lot, it would be a good idea to try to package it in Debian too. Yeah, uh, I have no objection to that. Uh, I did not expect anyone to use this other than me. So. Uh... <laughs> I did not really write this for anyone to use it other than me. So if you want to use this, uh, by all means, uh, I would be happy to move it to the team repository. OK, I'll I've, stop sharing I've, my screen. I've got another question, um, probably a simple one. Uh, do, do the other PKG tests, uh, the tests that we write, uh, are kind of similar for all packages, like a quick smoke test or something? In case, if it is, can we add uh this in the closure helper uh and just which will generate the test by default and maybe you know we can we can run it and if it fails maybe we can uh just debug this in case it's like similar for all all kind of modules i would love that i think that would be a great idea and i think somebody mentioned something about auto dep 8 as well uh yeah i did i think a bunch of these tests are very, very similar and it could be an easy auto dep 8 test and when it fails, you can just remove the autodep test command. Um, I don't have any experience with autodep 8 or talking with the, uh, the Debian CI team. But from what I've seen from the uh, the Python scripts they use, because I've been looking at their Python scripts, uh, it doesn't seem that hard. And I think it would make things a lot easier. And we could add tests like this much uh, in a mass. Yep, so something like um, you'll need to add test suit and uh, auto PKG test closure, something like that. And that should be a, a dep test. And maybe you can just integrate. You just need to uh, then mention a line in the, the control file that test suit auto PKG test uh, PKG CLJ. And that should run the tests by default. Yeah, that would be awesome. Uh, the only caveat that I mentioned earlier, uh, as uh, I think some folks ran into, is the specific like namespaces that you need to test if you're doing a smoke test, they're not necessarily obvious or easily discoverable. Uh, so that might be something that we need to take account of. Okay, maybe you can just give it a try. If it doesn't work out, we can just remove. I mean, 
I mean, I don't want to break things and then be like, oh, that didn't work. I guess we'll take it out. Uh, I'd rather not break things. So okay. we can see. We have one minute left. Maybe let's let Zigo talk and uh, end on that. Yeah. So uh, if I understand well, the, the project.clj uh, is uh, some bunch of, of closure code as well, right? So uh, the best way to to parse it would be in Clojure, so that maybe we could extend Clojure Helper to read that file and pick up some information from it, like the dependencies, the IC test, the license name, and such. So that Clojure Helper would ask less things. I wouldn't. I'd be careful about parsing it, depending on what you want, because, for example, PuppetDBs is code that runs, and you don't know what the right answer is until it finishes running. <laughs> um, but you can, by extension, you can add. We could add code to Project CLJ sometimes to print out what we want or do whatever. Yeah, I'd, I'd echo what Rob says there. Uh, it can be uh, because uh, essentially, like there's a macro uh, that's been defined by Linegan called project in that file, but it's just a bunch of code. So potentially, you could have a bunch of other code, and some projects do have this. So uh, okay, it can be risky. It's it not like a an I and I format or something like that. It's not just data. And in fact, uh, like folks will potentially use this to like swap in or out different dependency profiles based on environment variable set, uh, other things like that. It's, you know, it's sort of the risk of having something that's very extensible. But sadly, tools like Barn e print all the time help. we have, sadly, uh, we're gonna have to end the stream on the air. If you still wanna talk, we can continue talking here or in IRC, but the, uh, stream part of the box is going to happen. Just, just to wrap up on that subject, and then maybe you can say goodbye. So uh, it's comparable to a setup.py, in fact, right? It's like a make file, kind of. Right. I mean, in okay. the abstract. It's Turing complete. You can do whatever you want in there. Um, the But tools like line depths, line depths tree, line pprint, uh, line update in, or we could write our own plugins for lining, which is one of the things I was wondering about. I guess we didn't get to, unless y'all talked about it first. Um, was the, I think you brought it up, a lot of the discussion about using line again more. Um, and I don't know exactly what the plans were there or what we were thinking. Yeah, uh, I don't know, but I think we've got to wrap it up so uh, we can just continue the discussion on IRC. Thank you so much. It will be very helpful. Yeah, thanks for the buff and all the help. It's super nice. Thanks, everyone.